this video is sponsored by PotonStore.com, the best place to get yourself some TCG code cards. They are compatible with TCG Live and you can of course get everything on the website for 5% off using the coupon code ZAPDOISTCG. This video is also sponsored by CardMarket.com. This is a European platform where you're able to uh, buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. I personally use it every single day and you can do it as well. And you can use the referral name ZAPDOISTCG to help support the channel. This video is also sponsored by YourPlayMat.com. Uh, this is a platform where you're able to, of course, create your own custom playmat. They have, of course, uh, capabilities to ship worldwide and you can get 10% off by clicking the link down below. So definitely check it out. Last but not least is Dragon Shield, the best brand to protect your beautiful cards you can of course uh yeah there's links down below for us and european people and you can of course get your best quality uh, sleeves uh, available as well as deck boxes and binders thanks so much for sticking around with the commercials i hope you enjoyed today's upload if you do be sure to let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button and uh, yeah let's get this video going What's up YouTube, it's Zabdo's TCG here and welcome back to our TCG video on my channel. Today we're going to be checking out a tier list for the upcoming regionals and uh, league cups, league challenges, whatever you're uh, having planned this weekend. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to the Stuttgart regionals. I'm going to be making a tier list uh, yeah, based upon the last tournament's resu results. So we did see that Snorri's block was able to win a tournament. We did see some oh, uh, crazy uh, interesting tech cards being included like the Minior, etc. And uh, the meta has been shifted a little bit from here and there uh, ever since the release of Paradox Rift. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, you're gonna get uh, daily Pokemon TCG uploads over here that you don't want to be missing out on. And uh, most importantly, we're also gonna be vlogging these Stuttgart regionals. I still have no idea what to play, but I'm gonna give you my personal honest opinion and give a, a tier list based upon the latest results. So if you guys are hyped for it, let me know by rocking the hell out of the like button. And without further ado, let's just dive into this tier list. We are here over at TrainerHill.com. If you want to be making your own tier list, uh, I actually put in all the decks that had some similar results over at the online scene in uh, the tier list maker. So uh, we have only the best decks to be choosing from. So no rogue decks like the Zoroark Toolbox deck. I know it could be cool, but uh, if it's not on here, it's probably not that good and you should uh, reconsider uh, yeah, uh, another deck because uh, it actually all of these decks have a high power level and that's what we're going to be uh, showcasing uh, because these are uh, actually the decks that had results already. So with that being said, we're going to be starting off with Gardevoir. I think this is a, a tier S deck in the format uh, just because of the fact that it has late game potential like uh, none, nothing you've ever seen before. Iono in combination with Counter Catcher and Scream Tail is just uh, it cheeses out games. Uh, we have Reversal Energy to make sure they are shining our Kana. Gardevoir is able to one shot uh, V Stars and V Maxes. Uh, there's even EXs, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's going to be very strong. And you also can rely on the good old classic refinement to draw a bazillion amount of cards. If you're falling behind, Mirage Tap is actually not too bad of a choice to just get yourself more uh, Curlias in play. And in this uh, agent time, I think Gardevoir deserves its spot here. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be taking a look at Charizard. This is a tier A deck. Uh, a lot of conversion uh, for, of course, the Charizard deck over at the Gdansk regionals. That, as we saw, Robin Shield making that top four uh, with a very cool list. Uh, using the Rodom V as some additional draw power. Also as a Forest Seal Stone target. Charizard is a great deck. You might think uh, which version is better. The TM Evolution build would be Barrel or the Pidgeot build. It all comes down uh, if uh, there's a lot of path to the peak in the format. If there's a lot of path to the peak in the format, then the B Barrel version is probably better if path is not uh, among the top decks then you don't have to worry about it and Pidgeot is obviously the better choice with that quick search ability so pretty much you get out the Zard you have it 330 HP monster by your side and you're slapping more damage for every prize card the opponent has taken you can even fall back and rely upon the uh, radiant Charizard as a one prize Pokemon this is a very strong deck and uh, I'm putting it here on the tier A slot because I think uh, we'll see a lot of these two decks currently like Gardevoir and Charizard are like the most popular decks going uh, into the Gdansk, uh, not the Gdansk, into the Stuttgart regionals uh, in my opinion. Even though like and Gdansk Maridon was the most popular deck, we're going to be putting that uh, Maridon Flaffy deck also in the tier uh, A slot here. 
a little bit below Charizard in my opinion, but uh, Marino Flaffy is an interesting one, right? If you see a lot of the success with your generators, you're gonna be doing well. People are debating, is the Peony build better than the regular uh, build with some path to the peak or maybe like the beach court? Like you have the 13 energy build with some, uh, yeah, reliance on like uh, Ionos and research. And then you have the Peony build that is just high on getting the turn one. Uh, Iron Hands off. Iron Hands against a lot of these archetypes is like, uh, yeah, very, very powerful. If you knock out like a Ralts on the first turn going second, you're probably going to be winning that game. And that's also the reason why Gardevoir's conversion rate in Gdansk Regionals was not that good. But I think Gardevoir will bounce back and the popularity with Maridon will slow off just a tiny little bit, making uh, this actually a right choice here at the tier A slot. We're going to be uh, taking some uh, weaker decks out of the way first. It has Lugia, putting that in the D tier, and the Goldango also putting that in the D tier. These are like decks, they are technically uh, decks that could perform, but Lugia has been seeing like no play whatsoever, has a terrible time against Gardevoir, Charizard, Maridon. If you don't have what it takes to beat one of the stronger decks in the formats, you cannot even play the game. And even, they did not even talk about Roaring Moon, which is also a horrible matchup for Lugia. Uh, Goldango, on the other hand, is a deck that is not like refined quite yet. People are playing it with like Scizor in it as the one prize attacking Pokemon. Uh, with the Make It Rain, you can slap 50 damage for every uh, energy you're discarding from the hand, but uh, typically that's not enough to get through like a 330 HP Zard. You're also weak against Fire and uh, you're weak against Path as well. Uh, I don't think uh, Goldango will be performing all that well. Now let's talk about uh, a C tier deck. Uh, let's talk about Clove Electro. This is actually a deck that is a very niche, uh, but it, uh, it is a deck that doesn't mind going second. You can on the first turn going second attack with Eagle Leg Road using your Spicy Top Curie, using uh, the uh, Brute Bonnet in combination with Ancient Energy Boost Capsule to make sure you can slap 200 without needing any energies. You're a grass type. You hit weakness against Charizard. You hit weakness against Roaring Moon. You have the Cloth being able to also uh, one shot anything that is weak to lightning. Actually, that, that is a lightning type, so that's a weak fighting. So Cloth can actually destroy Maridon, uh, the Electrode can destroy Charizard. I think it's a, a solid pick but it uh, does have some trouble with Gardevoir so putting it in the C tier but it's definitely a deck that uh, gets me fired up because it uses a very strong one prize Pokemon. Snorlax Stall is still in A tier um, even though people are tacking in the Minyars not all of them do. I know like people say, oh, Maridon has a good matchup against Snorlax Stall, but that not, that is not always the case when Misfortune Sister discards half of your uh, switch outs. Also, uh, Minior, I can only see being tacked in into Zard, maybe in Gardevoir, but Gardevoir does have two rows uh, scenario in combination with Palpat as the uh, yeah, answer to Stall. Uh, Snorlax Stall is a deck that actually won the Gdansk Regionals, but will that uh, impact uh, how everyone plays? They already know how to play against it. Let's just be clear, there's gonna be way more knowledge out there how to play against Snorlax Stall and the tech cards you want in your deck. It has a very terrible time against uh, Maridon, against Lost Tina, definitely, and uh, you also have a terrible time against Ente Iron Valen that just charges up a Roaring, uh, actually a Radiant Zard and just goes crazy. It has a terrible time against Roaring Moon as well, so currently in the A tier because the deck is still strong inherently, so we'll put that over here. A B tier is going to be Chimpao. Chimpao is a deck that actually had a very bad conversion rate if we're taking a look at the day one and the day two field uh, from the Gdansk Regionals. Uh, in part due to the fact that uh, DTE Mew was uh, yeah, everywhere. DTE Mew with uh, what path and also the fusion build. Like Mew is very good into the Chimpao matchup uh, inherently and that's also the reason why it didn't convert all that well. And uh, also people now uh, are playing like Lost Cities and Charizard, making sure they can like a Lost City a backscalibur and if they uh, have one prize or if you do that twice, they also lose the game. Um, yeah, this is the, a B tier deck. Uh, I, I was a huge fan of Chimpao before Paradox Rev, before all that uh, counter catcher, Iono shenanigans and Screamtail stuff. <laughs> but uh, right now a B tier, solid deck and nothing uh, else to say. Another B tier deck is uh, Ante Iron Valiant. This is a deck that actually came up uh, during uh, one of the regionals over in uh, the US and um, hasn't seen a lot of results ever since. It has uh, the Iron Valiant with the Tachyon Beds being able to sprinkle around some damage every, sing every single time it goes into the active position uh, with like 12 switch outs in the deck on, on top of like jet energies and stuff. You're gonna be able to uh, sprinkle a lot of damage. Yoga Loop first turn if you go uh, second is definitely a cap capability. There's weak HP Charmanders, uh, Frigi Bax, there's Mareeps, uh, Ralts everywhere so you can uh, prey upon that. And uh, with uh, the Magma Basin you can charge up Entei instantly so you can attack on the first turn going second. So I think this deck is good but sometimes has 
has a very uh, rough start. If like have not the greatest hand in the world, you have to sometimes squawk away a lot of uh, switch outs. Sometimes you don't find them immediately. So there is that. Uh, another uh, beater deck is the uh, Intellion Urshifu. Another one of those uh, very similar uh, strategies where you're uh, sprinkling out a lot of damage on the opponent's field. Uh, unfortunately, like I don't know if Intellion Urshifu like it has a very terrible stall matchup. Sometimes Gardevoir can get the upper hand when they're finally able to evolve. If you have a slower start, and sometimes your Intellion could also get slapped away by uh, yeah the Maridon. Uh, so uh, that's you can like see an Iron Hands attacking uh, your <laughs> Intellion the first turn, going second for three prize cards. Even though uh, you do have the Urshifu by your side, that definitely hurts like uh, like crazy because then they can just two shot the Urshifu V. Max. So there is things to think about. Also, I don't, I don't always know when they get a Charizard out. Is it going to be favorable or not favorable? There's a, definitely a lot of things to uh, consider when playing Urshifu and Talon. Sometimes you also uh, get trapped with your Radiant Delicazam. That could happen from time to time. I'm putting it here on the beat here. Um, moving forward, let's see here. There are Lost Box. I'll put Lost Box in tier C. Uh, and just for the reason, uh, there's a lot of like spread decks out there with like uh, Ante, Iron Valiant and Intel Urshifu. I know Tor did well, but uh, it did eventually lose it and, and to the Zards. The, the Charizard EX are now playing Lost City, so your one-off shenanigans uh, is going to be uh, pulling off way harder. If you like get out the Roaring Moon, it's going to get swept away to the Lost Zone. Also, all the Gardevoir and the Charizard players are now playing Jirachi, so... That makes uh, Lost Box not the biggest, uh, the the best play for the Stuttgart Regionals, in my opinion. So uh, I'll put it here on the tier C. Some people might actually perform well with it, but I'll put it in tier C. Uh, yeah. Next up is going to be Roaring Moon. Is also a tier B deck, and uh, I actually played Roaring Moon during the Gdansk Regionals uh, with a 5-2-2 score. Uh, you are very weak against Path, but if you take a look at what is playing Path currently, and that's actually the Muse, the Muse and the Lost Tinas. We're going to be talking about those uh, in a minute. But uh, if you whiff out on any Path deck, uh, also the Zard uh, matchup seems a little bit rough for uh, Roaring Moon. They do have the Vacuum to get rid of your Ancient uh, Boost Capsule. Gardevoir is very, very difficult for Roaring Moon, so that's also hence the reason why it's just staying around in Tier B for now. Then Lost Tina. People are always saying this is the best deck in format. I used to believe that as well, but I'll have to put it in tier B. I'll put it in tier B, it's fine. I think uh, Giratina Lost Box is a deck that people just always stick to it. You do have access to your late game Counter Catcher, Roxanne, and Sable Sprinkle plays, or uh, Star Vacuum, whatever you prefer in that late game scenario. But I, I personally think that Giratina Lost Box is a pile. And uh, it does, in theory, have great matchups against Gardevoir, uh, against Charizard, against Stahl. So <laughs> maybe Lost Zone Tina is actually not that bad. On paper, it looks very good, but in, uh, when you uh, convert it to the um, to the real life tournaments, you see that Tina like has like these very awkward starts. You have to like uh, abyss seeking most of the time, and you're going to be falling behind. So. I'll put it in tier B, could be a, a performer as well. Lost Box, Radiant Zard. Um, I'll put it in the C tier as well. I think all the Lost Boxes for me, I think uh, Lost Tina is the best version of the Lost Boxes, but all the rest of them I'll put in tier C because I'm convinced that the popularity of Iron Hand is too, too great and also Jirachi is almost everywhere and that's why I am personally putting the Lost Boxes in tier C. That could definitely change after this tournament. But we'll see. Uh, Mew with Fusion, I will put in tier A. I think Fusion Mew has always been a deck. Uh, definitely we are in Europe, don't forget. So uh, that's always performing uh, really well. And uh, it has the answers against everything. Like they can play Lost City, they can play Ice Q, they can already put some stuff in the Lost Zone. You have the uh, late game path and the Iono sometimes thrown in there. You can donk people with the Meloetta. I think it's a well-rounded deck. You just have to be afraid of... Uh, Spirit Tomb is not that um, common anymore, but sometimes people might be playing Spirit Tomb to counter the Rotom and the Charizard and the Snorlax. It's not a matchup, but yeah, Drapion is uh, your worst nightmare, I suppose. And then for DTE Mew, is Spirit Tomb is your worst nightmare. So the DTE version, I'll put it in tier B as well. So uh, this looks great to me. This is uh, my current tier list uh, for the Stuttgart Regionals or any upcoming Regionals um, this weekend. 
and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video let me know how you, what your thoughts are do you think Gardevoir is overrated do you think what will be the most popular deck at Stuttgart Regionals I really want to know your opinion down below for me personally Gardevoir, Charizard, Maridon, Mew these are like very popular picks uh, maybe Mew a little bit falling off and maybe uh, people have the answers for Snorlax Tall that it also falls off but uh, I'm definitely convinced let me just let's flip flop that around that Charizard, Maridon, Gardevoir are the decks to beat going into Stuttgart have yourself a very fantastic rest of your day Go check out my sponsors. There are links down below. Pokedownstore.com, the best place for TCG live code cards. You can use the coupon Zabdos TCG for 5% off. There is cardmarket.com for European players. You can buy and sell cards to people all across Europe. Use the referral name Zabdos TCG. There is dragonshield.com. Links down below where you're able to get 5% off. Use the coupon Zabdos5 for everything off over at dragonshield.com. The best brand to protect your beautiful cards. They have sleeves, binders, deck boxes, etc. And then there's yourplaymat.com where you're able to create your own custom playmat from scratch. And uh, with that, you're going to be uh, getting 10% off when you click that link uh, today. And you're going to be able to create the most beautiful playmat you've always dreamed of. Have yourself a very fantastic rest of your day. And I'll see you guys at the Stuttgart Regionals very shortly. Peace.